Hello everyone, my name is Katerega James. I'm going to be taking you through foundry technology. Foundry technology, to start with, let's begin with defining some of the click terms, such that you get an overview of what foundry technology involves. So, to start with, foundry, because I need this discussion to be interactive. I want to go step by step such that you understand, you get a clue of what is Foundry technology. So Foundry is a place, just like a show. Foundry is a place where we carry out what we call casting. So casting is a process. It's a manufacturing process, just like any other process. I getting it. Just like any other process that involves producing a product so just like casting also is a process so foundry is where casting takes place then we have the term technology so technology comes from two greek words techni meaning craft then logia meaning a saying i getting it so we find that a combination of foundry and technology technology simply means it's like a technique it involves machines i'm getting it it involves machines it involves systems it involves a technique it's just a method it's an art i'm getting it so when you combine foundry and technology you come up with what we call foundry technology so foundry technology involves castings castings are just final products we call them castings so once something is final we've obtained it through foundry practice we call it a casting so what are some of the different applications of casting in our day lives so foundry gives rise to what we call casting casting has applications some of the applications we can give that are common Hey, for you in order to give an, an, a good understanding, we have what you call cylinder blocks. So cylinder blocks, they can be for automobiles. But I have one here, a cylinder block of a motorcycle. So this is an example of a casting. So this is an example of a casting, a cylinder block. So this becomes an application of the foundry practice. We see pistons. These are also examples of foundry practice so these are some of the applications so these are pistons they can be used in automobiles they can be used in generators they can be used in vehicles so pistons are casted under the foundry practice then we can make use of pipes some of the parts like these ones lead pipes these are some of the examples this is a component of a pipe water pipes supply pipes so this is an example of a casting so it is an application of foundry practice we can make wheels there are some wheels that are made out of foundry practice so there are different applications of foundry but we need to know how do we carry out foundry technology what is involved in foundry technology we have to go a bit little bit slow for you to get a clear picture of what is foundry technology so to start with Let's first understand what is casting. We've said the final product is casting, are castings. Then what is casting? So casting is just an old method of manufacturing. It's an old process of manufacturing to produce what we call castings under the foundry practice. It involves the melting of metal or metal scrap in order to get a liquid. That liquid is molten metal. It is very hot. But once it's solidified into a shape that we've got or into a shape that has been molded in through, or in through the shape, like, okay, the shape we call it because it involves preparation of the moldy cavity. So moldy cavity is where you pour the molten metal. So once you pour the molten metal, it solidifies. The shape you obtain is what we call the casting. So casting involves all that. It involves melting of metal, involves pouring metal into the mold cavity, solidifying of the, mold, the, 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 what? the molten metal in order for it to obtain the shape. So that is 
what involves with casting. Mm? And we're going to see different terms when it comes to foundry practice, foundry technology. We are going to see terms. How do we come up with the casting? Eh? How do we come up with the final product? I getting it. So some of these we are going to be looking at them as we follow our lectures. Eh? But here I just want to give you an introduction, an overview of the different terms that we are going to be using when it comes to foundry technology. We have terms like a flask. We shall see though here I can't access the flask, but I'll try to get some of these flasks. We have a flask. A flask holds the molten sand intact. It keeps it intact. I get it together. So that is a flask. We have terms like a cop. A cop is just a, because we have a flask. A flask is made up of a cop and a drug. So the cop is the upper part of the molding flask. I getting it. Then the drug would be the lower part of the molding flask. I have the core. What is the use of the core? The core simply means it helps us in creating all of these hollow sections. So here we need to make use of the core. So this is a hollow casting. So the core help us to create this hollow shape. Are you getting it? Then we have what we call the core prints. Core prints are projections of patterns required for supporting the core. Some patterns have core prints, some patterns do not have core prints. We are going to see terms like pouring basin. What does a pouring basin do? A pouring basin is just a small funnel shaped cavity at the top of the mold. Are you getting it? So it helps us to pour the molten metal. We're going to look at the cheeks. What are the cheeks? Eh? The cheeks are simply the intermediate flasks. Now these ones are common when it comes to the three-piece molding process. The three-piece molding process, we're going to make it, it, it makes use of the three-piece pattern. We're going to look at the different types of pattern. We're going to look at the solid piece pattern. We're going to look at the two-piece pattern, the three-piece pattern, the match pattern, the plate pattern. But when it comes to the three-piece molding process, we are going to involve the three-piece pattern, which has the cop, it has the checkbox, it has the drag. So it is where the cheek makes use of it. So we are going to see where does the cheek use, the cheek use C-H-E-E-K. We are going to see where is it used. We have the sprue. Of course, the sprue, this is the passage through from the pouring basin to the molding cavity. So it is the passage. Remember, I have said the, mold pole, the, the, the pouring basin is just a funnel. So the passage through from the pouring basin to the moldy cavity is what we call the sprue. We are going to see these terms in detail. We are going to see these different shapes. Are you getting it? Then we have a pattern. Of course, that we can't talk about found without looking at the pattern. A pattern is simply a replica of the final product. Are you getting it? So replica, it's a model of the final product. We are going to see the different types of patterns. We are going to see different materials from which we can make patterns like wood. We are going to look at metal patterns. How do we make them? Well, how do we look at the allowances, the dimensions, and for what are the advantages of the different materials for making patterns? We are going to see all that into details. Are you getting it? But here for the start, I want to give you an introduction. We move together step by step. We have things like runners. A runner is just a passage in the parting line for regulating the molten metal flow. That is a runner, just like the name suggests. Then you have the molding sand. The molding sand, it is more commonly used in sand casting. Are you getting it? So the molding sand is the freshly prepared refractory sand, which contains silica, it contains clay and moisture. So this is the sand that is going to be used when it comes to making of our casting or making of the moldy cavity. So we're going to see different steps. How do we prepare the molding sand? Once we know how to prepare the molding sand, then it will be able to help us in order creation of the moldy cavity. I getting it. So we're going to be looking at all this. Then we have the gate. So the gate is just an actual entry point of the molten metal to the moldy cavity. So we're going to see these words. I'll be using these terms while we are interacting, while we are presenting. Next time I'm going to give the next lecture, I'll be presenting in PowerPoint. I'll be writing on the white sheet so that you get an overview of what you expect from the technology is.
Then we have the facing sand. Facing sand is a special sand that contains carbonaceous material. Need to take note. Then we have the risers. What is the use of the riser? The riser is simply a reservoir of molten material provided in a casting. Are you getting it? Then you have the backing sand. Okay? The backing sand is made up of used and burnt sand. Are you getting it? So this one is helping us in order to prepare the moldy to, to, to repair the moldy cavity just in case it gets cracks or damages during the removal of the pattern. We are going to see all that step by step. We have the chaplets. The chaplets, see, these are just small parts used to support the core. We have the parting line. The parting line is that line that separates the cope from the drug. I'm getting it. So we have the chews. The chews, these ones are used for rapid cooling of the molten metal. So all those are the different terms we are going to be looking at, such that you get a clear picture of what is foundry technology. So we are going to see when it comes to casting, what are the different steps? What steps do we follow? What is the process of foundry? So the process of foundry, there are five to four steps. The first one is pattern making. How do we make a pattern? We are going to see how to make a pattern in details. How do we make a pattern? How do we select a pattern suitable for a certain casting? Then after, we have to prepare what we call a moldy cavity. A moldy cavity is where we pour our molten metal in order to solidify into the final product. Then, because the first step is preparing the pattern, the second step is creating the moldy cavity the third step would be powering and solidification then the fourth stage will be will be cleaning and inspection of course inspection will involve detecting of defects that will be either corrected or some will be discarded just in case so we have to do all that okay? we have to step by step so that is those are the steps involved in casting i getting it in foundry practice so that will be giving a clear picture of what we are going to be looking at so we can't look at all that we minus looking at the different advantages and disadvantages of foundry practice what are some of the advantages of foundry practice one of them foundry work casting and the parts to make what we call intricate parts these are parts that are, are very small and sensitive. They can be internal and external parts. So foundry is capable of doing that. It can be used in obtaining of shapes of a required dimensional accuracy. That is foundry. Eh? That is one of the advantages, dimensional accuracy. It can be used in the making of heavy, heavy castings that are very bulk. So foundry is capable of doing that. The same thing, foundry can be used in making of, it is low cost. It is a low cost process compared to other processes. That is foundry. Foundry has a lot of advantages, eh? but those are some of the advantages that are common, intricate parts. It can be used for dimensional accuracy. It is easy. It has an advantage of machining. Okay? Casting is made out of foundry technology. Over casting is made out of foundry practice. They are easy to machine. Machining in that into the materials are not the tool does not is not affected by the material. So that is easy machining. They provide a good surface finish. When it comes to foundry practice, once you carry out casting, expect a good surface finish. Those are some of the different advantages of casting hmm? our foundry practice eh? there are some disadvantages of course the disadvantages we have is that such a process involves a lot of risks they can be environmental they can be to humans so when it comes to humans we know very well that when it involves molting of molten metal we expect high temperatures we expect the molten metal spillages so all these it becomes a disadvantage to the 
human health and safety so that becomes a disadvantage you have talked of also dimensional accuracy you might find that it is not perfect when it comes to certain dimensions small dimensions that are very sensitive so you find that dimensional accuracy might be lost porosity eh? porosity is an defect eh? so our castings may be affected by certain defects so that becomes a disadvantage when it comes to the foundry practice so those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of foundry technology so we are going to be looking at step by step but we know very well that in all engineering discipline safety has to be put into play likewise in foundry technology we have to put into practice what we call safety safety both to the environment safety to also humans that work in these shops so safety comes in by practicing what we call ppe personal protective equipment this is where we put on elements we put on safety shoes overall coveralls earplugs i getting it so to protect yourself from different dangers that may rise out of the foundry shop so that is just an overview it is an introduction to give you a clue about what is foundry technology in the next presentation we are going to be looking at what is a pattern we are going to say how do we make a pattern the different materials that are involved in making of a pattern so stay tuned subscribe to our channel fast lane don't forget to like thank you very much